One kiss is all it takes. If you ask almost any player about Master Zero in the US server about Deathert, you will most likely if not only hear negative descriptions of him, you'll hear things from outright toxicity to intentionally feeding. In the words of RatRL, Deathert is like an average Twitch chatter who suddenly got high elo and is now playing among the streamers. You could just imagine the chaos that Deathert can make from this. While Deathert might be one of the most toxic players in the US, and arguably the world, there is also another side to him that most people never see. But nevertheless, this is the story of how Deathert became one of the most hated players in League of Legends, while also being one of the most misunderstood ones. The origins of Deathert would start in Season 3 of League of Legends. Here he would start off by getting to level 30, barely having a time to play ranked. In Season 4 he would manage to hit gold, while in Season 5 he would rapidly climb and end towards diamond, and in Season 6 he would end the high diamond. It was at this point that Deathert would get incredibly toxic. In subsequent seasons he would get to masters and stay stuck in that rank for multiple seasons on end. Simultaneously, it was around this time he would pick up the name Urinatist, which is what Deathert was named at first, a perfect combination of the words Urin, urinate, and Autist while well, referring to an autistic person. The first traces of Urin Atis can be traced back to 2020. In his high diamond endeavors and dipping into the lower ranks of masters, he would clash with people, in particular YouTubers in the League of Legends scene, such as Logilol, which is a Spanish YouTuber. Logi would post screenshots of his interactions with Urin Atis, showcasing how much he is typing in the ridiculousness of his flame. Logi's fans and other members of the Spanish League community would obviously joke about the situation, but Urin Atis would also translate the beef from League to Twitter by responding in their replies. His toxicity wouldn't seem to follow as two days later Dai from the French community would post a tweet. Hey Riot Support, I found a scumbag in the game. I find his behavior unacceptable. And accompanying that tweet would be a video of Urinatist's toxic behavior. Où le mec, le mec fait exprès de ne pas jouer avec, s'il vous plaît. Il est temps de faire régner l'ordre sur ce jeu vidéo. Dai would also go on to post a few more clips regarding the same game, showcasing a trait that Urin Autist or Dead Dead would continue to have for some time, simply AFKing a game that seems impossible to win, albeit his stats are in a position to carry. Ah, de support, ah, de support, clippé. Ah, de support, écoutez-moi bien. Moi, je suis le shérif de la faille de l'avocateur. Lui, il vous prend pour un con, d'accord Lui, il est AFK, il soft hint, regardez. Regardez, et je, je ne vais pas être banni. Non mais rendez-vous compte, il vous prend pour des cons. Je... Bon, il a rien dit sur votre mère, mais c'était pas loin. Hein. Donc moi, je dis ça, euh, faut faire un truc. Hein. Lastly, Dyer would end his thread by asking the community to unite and report him in unison. It would seem like Urinotis was terrorizing in the ranks of High Diamond in this case, but he would further rise from Diamond, sailing through Masters and eventually reaching low Grandmasters prior to Season 11. Urinotis would continue to interact with people, but in a limited capacity, until Season 11 where he would seemingly disappear from League altogether. But in actuality, behind the scenes, Urinotis would eventually join the Danish military during Season 11. 11 in 2021. He joined it because Denmark has a mandatory conscription service for all physically fit men over the age of 18. He would at times play League of Legends with his fellow peers at internet cafes and this is where he would talk about the popular military story regarding his toxicity. So like back in military like you would only have uh, so much uh, free time um so what me and the boys would do we were like 20 boys going to the internet cafe and then we would play and then people would be like yo bro you are a challenger what the fuck this and that um, um, and I'm I'm a pretty uh, like I would say a happy guy in general, right? But as soon as I play League, it fucking goes down, man. Like I became a fucking demon. Um, so they would like legit see me like herma chat restricted, herma flaming. Legit, my mood would be ruined instantly when I saw something disgusting, and they would be like, "Bro, what the fuck? I didn't knew you were like that." So people were legit shocked, and they thought I was acting this way, but I was really not. I'm just so emotionally invested in this game because I wanna hit rank 1. Um, I'm not saying what I'm like feeling is okay or it should be like that, but when I have something in my mind, I wanna achieve it and anyone who's gonna stop me just pisses me off really. But upon his return, he would slowly climb, and in Season 12, for the first time, he hit Challenger on the West, reaching somewhere between the 900 to 1000 LP mark. This is also where Urinotis would morph into another name, Deathert. The name Urinotis originally came into being after he would buy fresh hand-leveled accounts, effectively switching from account to account as they were being banned one by one due to his toxicity. Eventually, he would do a Darkwing Jax on the account named Urinotis, and he would stick with it as it's something he became known for. But he would have to change his name, as Twitch wouldn't allow the name citing it is too offensive, which breached the 
rules and resulted in a suspension of his account. He would create a new account by the name of Deathert, which originated from his duty in the military for 8 months. His peers in the military would have called him by his surname Tandugan, which is apparently hard to say in Danish, and they would rather opt into using his middle name Uslu. In addition, there's his famous song named Jungle by Melonfinga Music, where they sing about Dedaru. This is kinda famous for Danes, so his nickname would become Dedaru in the military. However, as his surname is Tandugan, he would adapt and adopt this nickname resulting in Dedar T. When Dedar got Challenger in Season 11, he would have needed to improve to escape the Purple Hell, and also love Grandmaster. His way of improving was to seek out other high elo players to watch for improvement, and he would start by watching Tarsaint and Darkwing Jacks because he loved their aggressive playstyle, and as well as their passion for winning in League of Legends. Even though they were toxic, Dedar would see both of these personalities have the passion to win, and their toxicity would be a byproduct of that, just like it was for him. And that's why he resonated with Tarsaint and Darkwing Jax. A toxic player like Dether would of course have conflict with playing with other high elo players with his challenger MMR, clashing with big time personalities like Ratirel, Drutut, Zukil, and among others. Concurrently to him reaching challenger, he would also start streaming. He always thought he was getting good content with his friends, with them messing about, and he wanted to document it. But the main issue he had up until 2021 was that his computer wasn't good enough for streaming. That was until he bought his own computer. It was in seasonal 11 to season 12 where Deathert would gain the most notoriety. There are many examples of this. On Twitter there is a seemingly endless amount of mentions regarding Deathert and his chronicles in its solo queue. There's also many infamous interactions with high elo streamers. For example, Zuki would come to hate him after playing multiple games with and against him, and he would prefer dodging the guy than playing with him. There's, there's no way. This guy is playing. He's trying to make me dodge. It's a bit too obvious, my man. Like, surely not. Never seen that there to play by. It's not him. I don't think it's him. Is it actually him? Please. <laughs> it's actually him. I go off. I see bay. It's just not the day for League. It's just not. I'm not playing versus Renekton also. And then I have that there to go. It's been a pleasure. He's not <laughs> Thank God he dodged though. Cause like I'm not good at why, you know? So it's like this game was lost. I respect that. Even Ratarel would come across him many times and he would play with him enough times to catch on to his behavior. First blood, First blood to the current. Jarvan is probably dead as well. Now Jarvan's going to spam ping again in rage and proceed to run it down mid. Yes? Well there we go. <laughs> Perfect! Everything's in order. And there's of course his honest reactions when meeting Deathert in solo queue. <coughs> okay, but now you're just doing it for stream. Nobody finds it funny. No, is it Deathert? Ew! <laughs> yeah, it's like, ew! You know, instantly. But even so, Ratharel would subsequently note this about Deathert. That third isn't... I don't hate him, it's just cringe. Like, it's just... I don't know how to say it. It's like one of the fanboys just made it to high elo. He like, escaped the chains. Rattles. He just made it into challenger. And that's that guy. Ogren also has his opinions about that third. That third, the Kha'Zix UTP in high elo spielt nur das Feld Kha'Zix. Sogar Tal und alle spielt er mit das Feld. Aber ich dachte, das Mythic ist shit. Ja, der Spieler ist ja auch shit. Ne, shit Spieler, shit items. <laughs> I mean, Vian Ogren has two different plays that... He plays Conqueror Bruiser, I play Assassin, right? I mean, I am... Bro, people told me I'm shit so many times, I start to believe I'm shit as well. But that's what I like about it all. When people doubt me and um, I'm gonna make them all eat their words, right? So I cannot blame him for saying that, I gotta be real. Deathert would also suffer from hate raids on Twitch, maybe understandable so, but... There is no denying that people were hoping for his downfall, and so it would come as his Twitch channel, Deathert would suffer from an indefinite suspension sometime in May of 2022. Oh well, looks like they got us with an indefinite ban. I'm so sad, can't really do much, other than hope that they'll forgive me. I said a very bad word that got me banned, I let you guys down. Reactions to this would be mixed, as some would congratulate on this occurrence, but others would hope for a redemption 
Snark, seeing this as an opportunity to grow. The news of his ban would be something that Dether just brushed off, but he would come to eventually grieve more about it. Dether would state he wouldn't initially care much about the ban as he was a small time streamer having 30 to 50 average viewers. With little care for his community or the branding he was making to himself, he would continue with his solo queue endeavors in a somewhat depressing down spiral, continuing with his toxicity both on Twitter and solo queue. It wasn't until a gnawing but little feeling that slowly but surely grew stronger. To him the loss of his stream would grow strongly on him, and Dether would come to regret his actions, as he missed a nice but niche community he could interact with. The loss of his stream would cause him to change for the better, especially with the hardships he had with YouTube. He would attempt to change platforms from Twitch to YouTube after the ban, but it would work to no avail as he would barely reach 4 average viewers on his YouTube streams. Knowing that he couldn't stream on Twitch anymore, he would reminisce about the past streams and community because it was a big part of his daily life and that was fulfilling to him. He would appeal after appeal, but he would keep on getting rejected. It would take over 9 months for him to finally be unbanned on Twitch and return bigger and better than he was before. Already half a month after him being unbanned, Dether would achieve challenger rank yet again, hovering at a solid 900 LP. Many people didn't think much of Dether, especially rating his League of Legends skills as poor, but he would prove them wrong by reaching challenger once again and doing this by one tricking Kha'Zix, which was suffering during that time. The League community would slowly start to notice him as one of the most prominent Kha'Zix OTPs on the US server. Prior to Dether's rise in the League community, the only respected high yellow Kha'Zix player would be Tano, but he would suffer from issues regarding inactivity, leading to Dether getting more attention. Dether would also also showcase his achievements, calling out people who thought he's a bad player. For those of you who called me a one trick, I proved you wrong. For those of you who said I wouldn't get unbanned from Twitch, I proved you wrong. For those of who you are fighting for rank 1, I'm coming for you and I will prove you wrong. Nether would grow slowly on his Twitch channel, going from 50 concurrent viewers to 100. He would also start networking and befriending other content creators at this time. People who gave him a second chance and looked at his streams saw the wholesome, funny and respectable side of Nether. This would be the likes of Selfmade, Rohan, among a few others. However, Dether would have a massive setback when it came to solo queue from March on out, dropping quite literally over 1000 LP. He would subsequently be stuck in purple hell, roaming the ranges between 300 to 600 LP. According to Dether, this would be because of a change in his playstyle. Previously, he would have a carry aggressive style of playing jungle, hoarding and taking resources and playing for himself to carry his teams. This strategy worked well for him, until he came to Challenger, where the playstyle wasn't so consistently good to utilize. He would then adapt a more balanced playstyle, playing around for teammates and objectives, rather than the selfish playstyle he did the best, but also at the cost of his teammates. He would stay with his passive playstyle after dropping into Masters, where he wouldn't realize for a long time that this playstyle was the issue for him. The whole period of him being stuck in Masters would cause him to reflect, and with that would reinvigorate his aggressive playstyle, causing him to get a rapid climb for Split 2 of Season 13. But this period wasn't free from Dether's usual toxicity. In March of 2023, where his 1000 LP lose streak would start, Dether would come into a game with Azab, a challenger Velkos player, where they would erupt in an argument in game, but eventually it would turn into a surprising voice call. <laughs> Bro, why would you invade? Just fucking gank mid. Just gank mid. What are you doing, yo? What? She's pushing and she got. Yo! I hate you, dude. What, what do you mean now? You're coming. What do you mean now? You got fucking exposed. Holy shit! Holy fuck! You have a free gank, and now you come and she has stun and movement speed and everything? God, you're a degenerate. No, stop! <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh no. It's really depressing that you can play like that in challenge. Like, I don't even mind him playing bad, it's just this attitude. This attitude is so pathetic. Downright embarrassing. I doesn't exist, my jungler doesn't exist. He has Moby's first item on Kindred. Like, <laughs> this guy is definitely running it down. You wanna 9x me when you and Vilkas are clearly the one trolling me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 hello? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, sure, it's pretty good. I have to know why the fuck you would ping me randomly. What? You pinged me like, uh, like when I was invading the graves. You pinged Enya or some shit. Uh, yes, that's what a laner does. He pings when there's oppor opportunity. Yeah. But how is that an opportunity when you are literally hitting his Nexus tower? Uh, no, you're mistaken. Uh, you wanna watch the replay? Yeah, I'm already on it. And you're trying to do an invade bot lane, which actually makes no sense. Uh, you can't. Why does it not make sense? Because your bot lane can't do shit. They can't move. I can't move. Well, well because I wanna freeze anyway. She's gonna be stuck. This is a hard winning matchup for Velkos, and if I get one kill, the lane is over. Does that make sense? Okay, but how do I ever gank this? How is this not gankable? How how is it? You think 
Okay, okay. You think Kindred couldn't have ganked that if you appeared when I landed that combo? You think Kindred could have killed this from this situation? If I were... Right, okay, wait. You think you could have killed this, yes or no? Hey, brother, you, you don't need to scream like that. Okay, 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 watch it. If, like, okay, look at this. Should I be waiting there and wasting my time? Like, should I know that you would hit all this shit? Yes. No, we couldn't even kill him. Like, we legit couldn't. Believe it, like, he would just flash away. Wait, do you have flash? Yeah, I do. You, you honestly believe this doesn't kill? Yeah, I'm 100% sure. But now you're just spamping me, like, the fuck? Now it's like, so you have to realize, let's say we get the flash the second you hit your stun and shit. Okay. That's good. That's good. But you pinged me as I were clearing the ward. And by then it's not gankable at all. Like right now it's not gankable at all. Like she knows I'm here. It's not so because now you're see just, you. Yeah. 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 Sure. So now you're just pinging me to piss me off or what? I pinged you because I, I didn't understand, understand uh, your fucking play. I thought the play was super obvious. I pinged you after the play. Okay. Let's think about this. The Okay, listen, listen, listen. You tell me, hey, is that you should jump off a cliff? I go jump off a cliff. Is that murder? Yeah, it is. What? Wait, wait, basically, wait. it is. I basically made you do it. <laughs> wait, like, you're I not did. holding a gun to my head. You're just telling me, yo, you should jump off that cliff. That'd be funny. And I did. Yeah, but that made, like, I made you do it. That's like me telling you, like, go over and talk to that girl. I made you do that shit. Who was this game? Was this game winnable if you played? Even after? Obviously like... it was. Yes, it was winnable. So do you think it's worth pondering and, and meditating over your performance and your mentality to get better bro, for the future games? I never games? said I was normal. I never said I was normal. Like, did I? I never claimed I was normal. Like, <laughs> fuck the mid play. I didn't get mad at you that much. Like, okay. you pissed me off, I took your wave. Hey, we're fans, well, you know what I mean? But the, the thing bought it. Holy fuck, that's in. Did you even see what happened? I have no clue. Well, like, I you think were, you you were AFK have... and trolling like 99% of the game, and this Annie was still down like 60 CS, two levels, three plates. She was complete. She was non non champion this entire game. You could have literally just farmed and the game was over. You can mute. You, you know there's a mute function, right? Because I muted Bro. you at the start of the game because I wanted to and play. That's, that's, that's another issue with you wisp players that's another issue i'm talking on my stream every fucking day so i don't okay. know if you know me asap i play like a couple of games with you yeah but anyways like people always mute me always i can ping 100 times people will not move an inch if enemy jungler, jungler pings once and it's not even a good play the entire team is rotating for me and this part was like yo just mute this uh kindred at the start of the game like do you think that makes me want to play it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter how many times i ping no one is fucking moving an inch okay, like do you think okay, that okay. makes me want to play I, I understand you i understand how that can be discouraging so do you, do you think there's a commonality like what, what is the common denominator between you and all of your social interactions and all of your people your, your engagement what do you think is the common denominator it's you right if a lot of people don't enjoy playing with you do you think it's worth questioning like how you actually act in a game do you think you can improve on that or is that again something other people should do right no 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 i i for sure can but i feel like i so like, why I is it worth why is it worth caring about random people online that you will never meet again instead of focusing on yourself because that will improve you in the long term in life and everything why would you care about people focus on you I mean, like here's what I you mean, can do you can literally change your name nobody will know it's fucking you so they won't mute you at the start of the game and then you behave like a normal player and just don't ping too much don't be annoying and focus on yourself do you think that would change things i mean it depends because i did it once and like people like legit base of my champion pool they just knew it was me so like that, and that, that know, would be it, very sad like if you improved you were like healthier in the game more enjoyable to play with and people still do that that'd be pretty sad because they're it's just annoying like that's something that like bad history will track right it's very difficult for people to change the past right you can't do that you can change yourself but a lot of people still won't believe you at the end of the day but then again the only thing you can do is look forward and just focus on yourself sure sure like i agree with that i for sure can improve on a lot of mental shit like i've always been mental and it's not something i'm proud of it actually bothers me that i get triggered this easily but like this is me in a very good state like this is me in a very good state you had to see last season like i couldn't take <laughs> shit so like i'm legit so improvement improved. yeah like That's i'm legit improved. Yeah. yeah 
I agree. I agree. I think you, you can do much better. You can improve. You can focus. Because I feel like you have issues with incontrollable stuff. Like there's things you can control. Nine other variables, nine other players you cannot move. You cannot control. The only thing you can, you can do is focus on yourself. It's just basic life thing. Like I get some people fr get frustrated more often than others in, th in that situation because they really hate lack of control. But I, I think it's just a little bit of stoicism is the way to go here. Yeah, man. Like I agree with you. Like I do. I don't know what to say. And, like, like I know. Yeah, it happened. Like shit happened. Like, who cares like we lost the game like i really don't care i said during the game i, I literally don't care about games like I, I don't care if i'm gonna lose or win i played this game to play it as well as possible and win i i as soon as you started trolling i literally didn't care i said to my chat like whatever dude like who cares I like, mean, you are obviously like, like you are obvious a healthy like you are <laughs> obviously healthy mental league legit makes me a demon so like a funny story is like i went to the military for eight months and like at the end of it i said i'm a league player etc etc and they're like are you like because they know me so somehow like from leak you know um and they said you, how are you not toxic i will like leak makes me a demon like i'm not <laughs> making this shit up i mean sure i i, I think leak can bring out like some of the bad things that, about people but i don't know I, again i wouldn't put that much blame on the game it's like blaming blaming McDonald's for you being fat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. This productive therapy session ended in a surprisingly yet wholesome fashion, and it would prove again showcasing Deathard's good side. But still, League of Legends would prove again and again to show his worst side, such as his usual Twitter flaming. If people would play extremely bad, intentionally feed, flame, or ego check Deathard, he would DM or comment on people's posts in an effort to talk with them, basically wanting to confront them. He would also continue to rage because of how emotional he is as a person, and because of how emotional invested he is into winning. The fact that this has gone on for so long, albeit now in season 12 and season 13 it has become significantly less worse, he would suffer from people's resentment towards him. For example, the Druthud Ultimate Showdown is a tournament hosted by Druthud, featuring many content creators. Druthud would understandably decline Deathard's wants to join. But this really begs the question of whether Deathard is as bad as people make him out to be. Or is this a lasting resentment which Deathard is unable to make amends with? Although Deathard's toxicity still persists, it's nowhere near as bad as it was. When asked about if he has become a better person inside League of Legends that of 1 to 2 years ago, this is what he had to say. I'm not normal. I never claim to be normal. Like, I am so... F like, if my mom came into me, she would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because I really, like... I don't even know bro, I know I'm not normal, but I cannot change it either. So the reason behind that is, okay, this Walid guy I played with the entire fucking day, been running me down, not listening, blocked me, uh, fucking running it like inting me, bro, how can I tell him, yo Walid at me, I don't, it's not even that I wanna flame him, no I wanna say, you are shit, that's all, but anyways, um, it's like, more so, can you add me so we don't have to play with each other? And when they block me and I can't, like, find any way of uh, communicating with them, that's when Twitter happens. And that's when they get the entire flame, because that's crazy that they, like, are so <laughs> NPC alike that they can't, can't even have a normal conversation. Like, so what if I'm gonna flame you? Are you that, like, I don't know, I just feel like everyone is so... Um, snowflake i actually can hear their voice and i know they are human that's when i'm like okay you know what this guy has feelings um this guy just admitted a mistake you know like that's when i start to be like okay bro what like i'm sorry for flaming you as well you know what i mean if he can accept like accept his mistake of course i can say sorry as well you know what i mean um but that's why i think adding voice calm is so much better because if I know this guy's trying his best and I'm and he's like my bad, yo, say fucking less, bro. I don't care if you go 0 and 10. You know you made a mistake and you tried your best to fix it, but it wasn't the game. Like it wasn't meant to be this game. You know what I mean? Um, but if I be like, if I can't even picture them, I just imagine the worst fucking human sitting there with his um hands in his fucking Dorito bag, meanwhile playing League and fucking just sprinting it down. That's when I get mad, bro. But when he's like, Yo, dead dirt, you wanna come Discord and uh, look at it from my perspective? Say fucking less. You already got my respect, good sir. Like you could int me ten times in a row. But if you be like, 
come, can you see it from my point of view? For sure, man. Like, we are humans. We all got our different perspective. The main issue with Deathrite is that his toxicity comes to fruit within League, and many streamers have the same issues such as Yamato's death or Tarsaint. So why is he hated more than having Yamato or Tarsaint? Well the thing about Deathrite, in the past seasons he would intentionally feed, stay AFK on purpose, being very toxic in the chat, confront people, beef with them on Twitter if he got Dono walled. You are so shit you fucking loser. You are so shit man. I've just received back the results from your tests. Now, unfortunately, it turns out that you are, oh dear, cancer stuck in piss low. <laughs> That's honestly funny. This isn't necessarily things that Yamato or Tarsane do, or at least have stopped to do, which makes Deathrite more hated when he does this. But that's also the issue that Deathrite is faced with, his past. His past actions are being held to him today, as streamers like Drutut understandably still hold resentment towards his in-game behavior. Deathrite, you're mentally ill if you think I would let you participate in that. You're literally like biggest L9 mafia boss that like 80% of the people in the tournament hate. No point even DMing me, I'm sorry. I don't like you myself even, so... Ouch. But people are starting to give him a second chance, and that's where things are getting better. And because of his walls and personality, he would start to slowly grow stronger, reaching from 100 average viewers to 350 average viewers. Rat RL, we even seem to think he's cringe, supported him by hosting him. Like, that third, he's like stupid, you know, but he's like kind of funny. But he's also really hated by every high level player, which is the issue. But me also, what does it matter with being streamer? Yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. But it's not like anybody's gonna host him, you know, or anything like that, because nobody likes him. <laughs> what is this illegal type? Bro, like, I'm six, asking for fucking six, jungle, and six, homies, like, six, no, six, I played support mouse, too much. Beach, then go and mouse, play support six, if you're comfortable. Six, but Loki Raton, six, don't underestimate that third spy. Beach, beach, I'm telling mouse. you, I'm that guy, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll host that third because I fucking hate that guy. Maybe he can Hold become on. a big streamer, we can have drama and I can flame the shit out of him. Where the fuck's my raid button? Deathrite would also get collaboration opportunities with Sundergaard, which is a popular Danish streamer. Here he would have a lot of fun moments with him, which gave a very positive reception among the Danish audience. There was also some clips going viral regarding Deathrite, causing Deathrite to grow as well. And here other collaboration opportunities within the Danish scene presented itself, like playing with the famous Danish rapper named Kessie. So perhaps there is a better side of Deathrite, where given a chance he will prove himself to be. But it is really the moment of weakness where he's toxic or gets triggered by someone ego checking him that works against him. But even while Deathrite is branded with the reputation of the most hated League of Legends player, he is also perhaps one of the most misunderstood ones. While he was toxic in his earlier days, he has made amends to attempt to fix his toxicity. The solo queue experience with Deathrite might be bad, but giving the guy a second chance and interacting with him really can show the better side of him, as that's just what Deathrite want, a second chance. Besides like what Azab did, talking it out with him really shows his humble side. As players have hope for his downfall, it seems more like his redemption arc is just starting with him gaining partner status on Twitch lately, and aiming to get rank 1 on EUS, he'll prove everyone wrong regarding him being a mediocre player, which will make for an even more fun and interesting story to tell. You can support these type of documentaries on my Patreon with various rewards, it really helps to make me do this full time. And you know there's a lot of interesting topics to explore, you can maybe even choose your one yourself. Link is in the description. If you liked this video make sure to subscribe, and if you didn't like the video, I thank you for watching.